Good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm sure you've had a very long day, so I appreciate that this is what I would call as a speaker the graveyard shift. So I will try and keep you entertained and keep you awake um, for the next hour or so while I talk about creating an omnichannel experience for you and your customers and really understanding why you need to be able to align, particularly in today's modern landscape, the online marketing world with the face to face and real life marketing world, if you like. So just to give you some idea as to why I'm here today and why we're here and why I'm here representing Social B. So my name's Amy Hobson. I'm a digital marketing trainer and the marketing and training lead for Social B. Social B are a company that have worked with lots of different businesses um, in all kinds of different ways. You can see some of those names there as some of those people that we've worked with. Um, personally, out of those, I've worked with Ann Summers, Boohoo and Superdrive from a training capacity. Um, we are basically a digital marketing agency, so we work with all kinds of different businesses of all kinds of different niches. Um, there's lots of other names that could appear up there as well. The other thing, though, is that one of the things that makes us quite unique as an agency is that we're, we're not just retained, so we do it for you, but we also train as well. So we have a 50-50 split between our digital team and our training team. From my point of view, that makes my life a lot easier because my digital team keep me up to date with what's happening and I don't have to. And trust me, as a digital marketing trainer, there is nothing scarier than opening up Facebook or Instagram and the thing that you're training on has disappeared. And that has happened several times to me. So what I'm going to be talking to you about today is this. So really concentrating on that concept of omnichannel retail marketing and giving you an understanding as to why that's important and some of the things you need to think about along that journey. Because that's really what we're talking about more than anything else is creating that journey for your customer. And it's that seamless journey between online and offline that is becoming such a massive trend within retail. And it's one of those things that can really help you to stand out even against much bigger competitors. So we're going to look at how that marketing landscape has changed and why Omnichannel is becoming increasingly important. We're also going to look at understanding online and offline marketing from a customer's point of view and how they're actually merging together and how as buyers and as um, you know, decision makers, if you like. We are moving between those two all the time, almost subconsciously. We're not even particularly aware that we're doing it anymore. I'm also going to look at how you can help to bridge that gap between online and physical so that you can help your customer. Oops. You can help your customer with that experience along the way. Um, and how to engage with your customers across all of those channels so that you can help them to convert. So this isn't just about attracting customers, but this is about actually converting them into becoming customers so that they go from that journey of never hearing about you to being your most loyal fan and for you being able to get as many of, the, many of your audience to be able to do that as possible. That's really what we're here to talk about. So first of all, what is omnichannel marketing? Yeah, it's something that's been banded around for a while. It's something that's reasonably new in terms of marketing. It hasn't been around for a very long time, but it is something that is becoming increasingly important to retail. So omnichannel marketing is the integration of brand, message, and online and offline touch points. So it is the seamless transition from one to the other to provide a more impactful and memorable customer experience. So it's about the CX, it's about the journey. It's about all of those things that lots of people talk about, but it's about being able to really understand what that means for you and what that means for your business and for your customers. This isn't a broad brush approach. So there is no magic formula where I can say to you, this is what you need to have omni or reta omni omnichannel retail. This isn't something that I can say will suit every single person here. And there will be different pathways that different businesses take because it's all about your business, your customers, and the journey they need to take with you. But it's about providing that consistent customer experience, that no matter where I come across you, I know that it's you, and I get the same level of experience. So this isn't, having, this isn't about having a fantastic service in store, but then a website that fails every time somebody tries to purchase something. That isn't omnichannel. It's about consistent and identifiable brand tone. So there are some companies when we think about brand that we know who do it really, really well. Whether you love them or hate them, companies like McDonald's, Amazon, those biggies, John Lewis, where you know when you go to a John Lewis store, the look and feel of it. 
Um, me and my partner have spent um, today in London and we went into John Lewis and I knew what to expect when I walked in. I've got one in my hometown, so I knew what to expect. I knew where to look for things almost instantly because you get that feel and I know when I see them online that it's that John Lewis brand, it's recognisable. And what that helps to do is to build a know, like and trust. And that know, like and trust is really important to getting your customers to buy from you. If it's something that just costs a couple of pounds, no like and trust isn't as important. But if it's a statement piece, if it's something that somebody's putting an investment in, or they're providing a kind of, you know, you're providing them with a service and a different choice, then that no like and trust is critical. And that customer experience is absolutely critical because we're focusing on the customer, not the platform. Yeah, so we're not just focusing on the brand, it's all about what the customer needs and what the customer wants. I'm not always saying necessarily that the customer's always right, but it is about what they need as part of their journey. So why is it important? The first is that it can help to give an improved experience and satisfaction. So if I know you and I like you and I see you and that I get that same level of service every time I come in, every time I see you, then that's something that's really important to me because it helps me to be loyal to you. And that's what you want as well. You want your customers to keep coming back and to recommend you as well. It's about increased visibility. So as a very simple formula on social media channels, the more I see you and the more I engage with you, the more I'll see your content in the future. That's a very simplistic view of the algorithm on the platforms, but it's pretty much not that far wrong. That is the case. The more I interact with you, the more I'm going to see your content in the future. The more I see things that connect with me as your customer, as your potential customer, the more likely I am to see your content in the future. So that helps, yeah? That consistency helps. It can help, obviously, in terms of a boost in sales and traffic, because you're the first person I want to go to when I'm ready to buy. It brings me back to you. It gives you better customer insights because you can get to really learn from your customers because they stay with you. So you get to learn about their behavior. You get to learn about what's important to them. If you're constantly having to simply attract brand new customers all the time at the start of the journey, you're not learning from them. It's how they react, how they interact with you, what, what they buy, why they buy. Those kinds of insights are really valuable. And it can help, obviously, from a greater brand awareness. So the more people who see you, the more people who know you, the more people who talk about you, that's all good. And omnichannel retail can help as part of that. So I want to talk about the customer journey. Now, this may look really complicated in terms of a customer journey, but it is a fairly common journey that we are likely to take as buyers today. We're going to revisit this a couple of times in actual fact. So you've got your um, value and your customer interactions and value. And the reason why it peaks is because that's when somebody actually starts to buy from you. Yeah, so that's where you get your customers, your first, put, your first purchase, your repeat customer, and then your loyal customer. The one that keeps coming back to you. They are the most value customers that you can have. The reason that they're so valuable isn't just because they spend more with you, but they also bring more along for the journey as well, because they're your recommenders, they're your brand ambassadors. They're the ones who share and tell everybody how amazing it is that they've been in and they've bought what they've bought. And you can see across here that there are so many different potential contact points. Long gone are the days where you could walk down a high street, see a new shop, go in and buy. It doesn't happen like that anymore because we are constantly bombarded with all of these messages from different places, whether that's in print, whether that's on TV, whether that's by an influencer on social media, whether that's from a bricks and mortar, good old fashioned retail shop window, whether it's one of those things, whether it's from a Google search, whether it's from a Pinterest board. There's so many different ways that we can potentially start to become a customer. It makes it much harder for us, I'm going to be honest with you. And as I said, there is no one-step formula or magic one that can solve the problems that that creates for everybody. But there are different ways along there. And along there in terms of digital marketing, which is what we specialize in, you've got your things like um, search. So search and pay-per-click or PPC. So appearing at the right times for the right searches. SEO, doing that for free. Yeah, so rather than having to pay to be there, being able to do it for free. Once you've then got them through onto your website, it's about things like CRO, so conversion rate optimization. So not just getting them to your site, but getting them to buy from you as well. That's all part of that journey. And in amongst that, they may still see you on social media. They may see a store. They may see somebody wearing one of your pieces. There's all kinds of different touch points. 
Years ago, when I first started um, talking about marketing, which I'm not going to tell you how many years ago that was, because I don't want to admit it myself, but when I first started talking about marketing and learning about marketing, we talked about the seven touch points. So there was this magical seven figure that we had to come into contact with something seven times before we bought it. It's actually nearer 12 or 13, even possibly as high as 14 nowadays. And part of the reason for that is because we're bombarded constantly with different messages. Yeah, so if I go into my Instagram, I've had a quick flick through today, I've seen lots of people recommending different products, or I've seen different product businesses selling to me. Yeah, when I go on tomorrow, I'll see different ones. I'm still in that decision process, I haven't purchased anything yet. So that we're constantly seeing all of these different things. So that is kind of a, almost, if you like, hopefully nowadays, the complete journey as it stands. However, what that doesn't take into account, I think, I'll double check, no, it doesn't, I'm just double checking because I do various different trainings. What that doesn't take into account are things like voice and voice sales and voice ordering and Alexa and all of those lovely things that are still growing and are still being part of it. So it will continue to change and grow. But I also want to talk to you about this as a framework. So this is a Google framework called the See, Think, Do, Care framework. Um, it's fairly obvious, it says it across the top. However, what the See, Think, Do, Care framework, has anyone, has anyone ever come across it before as a concept? No, okay. If you get 10 minutes, I strongly urge you to Google it, obviously, because it's a Google framework, but Google it and look at the original article. Now, it's been around a while. It has been around in digital marketing terms quite a long time, so for about six or seven years, um, which is ancient in digital marketing when things move so quickly a little bit like me. Um, but on that see, think, do, care framework, it's actually a really good way of understanding what your customer needs and the different phases that your customer might go through. Now, some customers will move through really quickly. Yeah, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. Others will hang around in C for a while. Yeah? So what the see, think, do, care framework does, and the re one of the reasons why it's different to other frameworks, is this isn't based on demographics. So this isn't based on who somebody is, but what their intent is. So how much intent do they have to buy from you? So for example, in the C, that's normally your largest audience. Yeah, so your C audience is people who potentially want to buy what you buy, or buy what you sell, sorry, but aren't there yet. They have no direct need for it as yet. Yeah? The think audience are people who are looking at what you sell. Yeah, they're making a decision. They're trying to figure out what they need, when they need it. Yeah, and normally between see and think, there is a trigger point. So it might be that they've got a special occasion coming up, or it might be that they want to change the season of their wardrobe. They've had a look in their wardrobe and think, oh, I need to renew it. It needs to be refreshed. There's all kinds of different things that can cause that trigger. It might be that they've put a hole in their favorite pair of jeans. Yeah, it could be any number of things, but there's normally a trigger. That think audience is where they are looking, though. They're researching, they're looking on Pinterest, they're looking on Instagram. That's when they're most likely to be influenced. You've then got your do's, and your do's are your buyers. They're ready to buy, the money is burning a hole in their pocket, they are ready to go, yeah? And then your cares are your loyal customers. Now, if you look at the Google framework, technically, that's if they've bought from you more than twice. But depending on what it is that you sell, that may not necessarily be the case. So if you've got a big investment item, once may be enough. If you've got much smaller items, it may be three or four times. But what this does is it allows us to see our customers slightly differently and also allows us to understand that when I'm ready to buy, I might need to see a different message than if I'm just of interest in the future, maybe. Because that buy now message that you give me as a do isn't going to work if I'm a C. I'm not ready to buy, so I'm not going to buy now no matter how many times you tell me to. I don't feel the need as yet. So if you put that into real life context, as you can see across the bottom, Cs are people who drive a car. Yeah? So um, I drive a car. I've got a seven seat set at Alhambra. It does what I need it to. I've got four kids and a dog. So I need a big car and I need a big space. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I have no need at this moment in time to be able to, I don't need to buy another one. Although I did have a conversation earlier with my partner about the future of it. But when I get to think, I've decided actually I don't need such a big car anymore. My, two of my kids are at university, another one's 17, or 17 shortly. So I'm not gonna have as much need for as many kids in the car, thankfully. They do all apparently leave at some point. 
but I've got this, no longer need a bigger car, I can switch to a smaller car, so then I'm going to start looking for specs, I'm going to look in at all those different things. Once I'm ready to buy, I know what I'm going to buy, I know the colour, I know the spec, I know the brand, I know exactly what it is that I'm looking for, I've spec'd it all up in my head ready, I'm a do. And then when I've bought a car, I'm a fan of that car, or hopefully I'm a fan of that car. So if you ever need a seven-seater, I recommend the Seat Alhambra. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it's flexible. It does everything else. I might have a second-hand one going in about 18 months, two years, if you're interested. But it is, there's a journey there. The problem is that what happens is we concentrate as businesses on the do's, on the people who are ready to buy now, because that's where the money is. However, that's where I'm the least likely to be disrupted. In my circumstance with the car, I've already made the decision about the car I'm going to buy. I know the spec, I know the colour, I've set my heart on it already. Am I easier to disrupt there to come and buy from you, or am I easier in think where I'm doing my research? Or even in C, where you can catch my eye and make me interested or pique my curiosity. Once I'm in do, it's almost too late. You may be able to persuade me to buy now if I'm already ready to buy what you sell, but if I'm not, it's going to be a little bit harder. And this is part of this is all about omnichannel retail as well, because it's not just about where I see you online, it's about where I see you in store, or where I see you with an influencer, or where I see you when I do a search, or if I see you on Pinterest, or all of those places. That's that C, and it's that reminder that you're there, so that when I'm ready to buy, I come to you first rather than anybody else. Because then you can help me in the think stage to make the decision to buy from you rather than anybody else. So see, think, do, care. At each of those stages, I need a different viewpoint. The other thing to think about with this as well is that do's are actually your smallest audience group. Even if we split this equally and said we have a potential audience of 100 and there's 25 in each, if you only concentrate on the do with that buy now message, you're ignoring 75 people. If I said to you, I want you to go into, an, into a room of 100 people, but you can only pick 25 to sell to, you'd be a bit, well, why, why can't I talk to the other 75? No, because you're going to ignore them because you're only concentrating on the people who you think are ready to buy. You wouldn't. But the reality is that in actual fact, your do's are 10% of your audience. So by only concentrating on the it's available now, buy now, come and buy, you're ignoring 90% of your audience. So from an omnichannel perspective, you need to be catering for all of those audiences. So it's the shop window that piques their interest. Yeah, it's the search that gets them. It's the outfit of the day that makes them think, oh, actually, that'd be quite good for that occasion I've got coming up, or for my friend's wedding, or you know, for the day out with the girls. It's those kinds of things that you need to be aware of and that people have different triggers, but you can be a part of that journey for them. Because ideally what you want is for this to align. So ideally you want this to be offline, online, and in-store altogether. And offline doesn't necessarily mean in-store. It could be any, any, any other number of things. But you want that combination together, all working together. One of the ways that I think about digital marketing is that it's all cogs. Yeah, each cog turns on its own, but when you turn all of them together and they all help one another, it's actually much more powerful. You get a much better output. And it's the same with digital marketing, and omnichannel is part of that. If they're working together, so your store is working in line with your email marketing and in line with your, um, you know, your other aspects of digital marketing, your conversion rates, all those kinds of things, if all of those are working together, you're getting a much better output. So if we overlay that see, think, do, care on that customer journey, you can see now where some of those things start to fit. So from an SEO perspective, a PPC perspective, events, those kinds of things, then that is part of your C audience. That's where you're going to gain their attention originally, but they're not ready to buy yet. And that's OK. You're just going to be ready and be there for when they need to. From a think perspective, that's where you're talking about remarketing. Yeah, so remarketing campaigns are one of the most effective paid campaigns on social media, for example. So, you know, that little reminder that you've put those shoes in your bag, but you, in your basket, but you didn't actually buy them. Yeah, part of that remarketing as well is abandoned car emails, those kinds of things. So all of that comes into that category. So you've got influencer outreach, all of those things where you're going to be gaining attention. Then on top of that, you've got do. 
Yeah, so next is the do, which is where this is your customers and your repeat customers. So this is your messengers, this is your email marketing, this is your loyalty, all those things. And then care, where that falls into those kinds of that social customer community as well. So building a community online of regular repeat buyers who keep coming back to you. Which, if you've come across some of the other words that you may be familiar with in terms of digital marketing, it fits into these four. So awareness, consideration, purchase and advocacy and that advocacy in our existing customers shouldn't be forgotten one of the I was speaking at the spring fair um, for Moda on Sunday Monday and one of the things I talked about there was getting the most out of your marketing budget in a recession and that's where that advocacy is absolutely worth its weight in gold so not only is it easier to sell to existing customers than it is to constantly attract new ones but it also is where they will drag other people with them. So they will bring other people from their loyalty. They are the customers who come in regularly, who buy from you regularly, and then shout about you from the rooftops about how amazing it is. Who, when somebody says to them, oh my God, you look amazing, I love that jacket, they go, oh, I'll tell you a little secret, I got it from this place. They're great. They're the ones who are that advocacy and are bringing you in new customers a lot. Now, that doesn't necessarily happen overnight. Now, for some people, it does. So if you've got your regular impulse shoppers, yeah, so you've got the people who see it, want it, love it, buy it, and that's it, the chances are, though, they aren't always very loyal. Yeah, because they've bought into a single thing rather than a concept, or they've purchased a particular item that they like, but they haven't necessarily bought into the concept of who you are as a brand and what it is that you do and what you can offer. That's not to say that they won't come back, but they're less likely to. Actually, some of the ones who take a little bit more time, who take a little bit more in terms of you know, being part of their journey and being part of the conversation, they're much more likely to stay with you, and particularly in that advocacy. There's a, um, a local store in Solihull that my mum shops at. Um, she's just celebrated her 75th birthday. Um, so she spends quite a lot of time shopping because my dad hasn't retired yet. <laughs> He's due to retire shortly. But she um, is a loyal customer of theirs. But they also really understand her. They send her an email when they've got a new collection in that they know is from one of her favorite designers. Yeah, they contact her regularly. When she goes past, they wave and call her in for a coffee. Yeah, they know the kinds, when she pops in, they know the kinds of things that she's likely to want. And when she goes and tries one thing on, five other things are waiting before she comes out of the changing room with that one thing because they understand her and they know that she's gonna spend money with them. Yeah, my mum loves it. Yeah, she got a little birthday card off them for her 75th birthday. Well done, because guess what? She's going on holiday next week because my dad's bought her a holiday for her 75th birthday. She's gonna go and shop there. That's where she's gonna go first. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Yeah, that's the kind of customer that you want and that you want to attract and you want to keep coming back. So that when fashion trends change, you take them with you. Yeah, so that they come to you first to refresh their wardrobe. It's, that's the kind of customer that we know that we want. But they, that does take time to develop that relationship. It doesn't happen overnight. It can happen a little bit quicker, yeah, depending on the particular personality type of the person that you're targeting but it does take longer in other relationships. But that's okay, because that allows us to build that know, like, and trust so that we're always the first place that they come to. So in terms of the omni-channel experience, what we're looking at, and very often it's confused with multi-channel, but multi-channel is very brand-focused. So it's about making all of your channels look like your brand, and that's not what this is about. It's all about the customer. Yeah, it's all about, it's really easy. So, for example, really simple things, like I've showed an outfit of the day on Instagram. When somebody comes into store, it's the first thing that they see. When somebody goes onto the website, it's on the banner. Yeah, because it's that constant reminder, oh yeah, that was the t-shirt I was looking for. That was the jacket, that was the bag. So it helps to blend those things together so that, you know, what you don't want is an outfit of the day on Instagram and then I go onto the web page and it still shows you December items. Yeah, or your January sale. I don't want that. I'm looking for a seamless experience between the two. The other thing as well is, is like with your communications. So when you're emailing, when you're contacting people, when you're building that community within the social media platforms, that's up to date. So your website needs to be, your store needs to be. Yeah, the way I always think about it is that if you had a beautiful high street store, 
and it's Christmas, you're not going to have Easter products in the window. But we do that all the time with our social media, where we haven't updated it often enough, or our website, which is still showing products that were available for autumn, winter, when we should be talking about spring, summer. That isn't customer focused. That might be because you're time poor, but it still isn't focusing on your customer. And the communication and how we communicate, and the tone of voice that we use as well, is all a part of that. So all of this is dependent on your customer. Yeah, and this is an exercise for you to do, if you haven't already, is for you to really understand your customer and to build that persona. Now, one of the things that I get a lot, um, I do a lot of um, market, uh, networking, um, I speak to lots of people at different conferences and things and do a lot of training. And one of the things that I get is, who's your customer? And they say, well, I could sell to everybody. No, you can't. Hate to break it to you, but you can't. McDonald's can't sell to everybody. Amazon can't sell to everybody. Apple can't sell to everybody. If you're an Android fan, doesn't matter how great Apple tell you they are, you're going to stick with Android. Yeah? You need to speak to your audience, so you have to understand them. So who are they? What do they do? What are their objections or potential barriers to buying from you? How can you help them overcome that in that think category? How can you help them with the communications that they receive from you? What can you do to help them? Where does their journey mo most likely to start? So if you've got a really good Instagram following, it might be on Instagram. Yeah, so one of the brands that I um, talk about a lot in terms of community management and building a community is a brand called Motherhood. So it's part of the, uh, the lady, uh, the woman who owns the business, Gemma, started the Strong Girls Club. So you may have come across it as that, but it's Motherhood. It's a clothing line. And she has an incredibly strong community on Instagram. When she has a wobble, she tells everybody. When she's got new products or she's trying to decide between pin prints, she asks for everybody's opinion. She's probably already made up her mind as to which print she's actually going with, but she still asks. Yeah, she asks, do you want midi or maxi? What kinds of styles have been your favorite? She is always communicating with her audience. One of the reasons that she started the business was that she had PTSD after the birth of her second child. And she shares that experience and how that affects her and how it's affected her business and how it's created the Strong Girls Club. But she understands that most of our journeys will start on Instagram. So that's where she grabs us and that's where she gets us as a part of it. And as my partner said to me the other day, you nearly always wear Strong Girls Club. And I do, I've got lots of her stuff that I wear. I've even got a badge on the back of my phone. I've got four boys, I have to have the female voice in the house. But you have to wear your customer's shoes to really understand your customer. Yeah, it's not enough just to be able to say, oh yeah, no, they're that person. Really understand them, walk in their shoes, understand what they need to see from you. Don't assume anything. Just because you know what something's called doesn't mean they do. Just because you know how to describe something doesn't mean that that's what they're searching for. Yeah? Really simple things can trip us up. Yeah? So just because you know it as a particular fashion trend or something like that doesn't mean that your audience are look, looking for that yet because they may not be ready for it yet. So educate them. But you have to be in your customer's shoes to understand that. Now, that could be through keyword research. That can be through asking your customers questions and being open about it. There's all kinds of different ways that you can do that, but you need to wear their shoes to really understand who they are and what they need to see from you. Now, it might be that you can ask a couple of friendlies. So even really simple things like your website, ask somebody to find something on your website. How easy was it for them? Ask a friend to do it for you. How easy was it? How easy was it to navigate? Because you know where it is on your website. It seems obvious to you. I've recently invested in a new business with my partner, and. Other people's processes and other people's names are still tripping me up seven weeks later because I'm still learning what they <laughs> called it. Yeah, because it's about understanding your customer and understanding what they need. Just to put together a couple of example um, kind of omni-channel parts to it really as we kind of almost come to a close. But this is an example of an omni-channel journey. So a customer or a shopper discovers a new product through a social ad. So something appears on a social ad that piques their interest. It might not be from you at this stage. Yeah, hopefully it would be, but if not. They then do a generic search to look at the different options. How many people see something and then do a gen generic search on Google to see what else is available? Yeah, it might be to see if it's available at a different price or a better price. It might be because you liked it, but it wasn't quite right. I needed it in a different color. I love the fluoros that are around. They don't suit me. 
Yeah, I might like the style of something, but I could never wear it in a, in a certain colour because it just doesn't suit me. They then narrowed down that list of options. We do this as searchers. We'll find a search, we'll click through, we'll look at something. That might make us then go back and do a more narrowed search. Now I understand more of what it is that I need, so I can do a more specific search, a more niche search, if you like. But they're going to look for more specific searches. We're also, at this stage, going to be looking for reviews and referrals. So how many five-star reviews are there? How many reviews are there about the style or about the fit? Yeah, or about the different sizes that people have purchased, maybe. As a female who's slightly taller than average, I've struggled with this for years. The amount of stuff I've sent back, because it's what's maxi on some people, is below the knee on me. Yeah, so it's about those things. At this stage, this is where they're most likely to sign up to emails, because you've really got their interest now. They're most likely to want to come to you. Still not quite ready to buy yet, though. They may be looking for referrals. They may be looking to find out more. They may be looking for ac to access discounts and promotions. Or they really like something, but it's a little bit out of budget, so they want to know when your sale starts. And then, finally, they make their purchase, either through an e-commerce site or a bricks and mortar store. So all of those different points that's where you need to be present and you need to be there and you need to be the same people and the same person. There is nothing more confusing than going onto social media and seeing something that's quite kind of light, entertainment, a little bit of banter, lots of you know, fun things happening, and then you see somebody in real life and they're really formal and dark and a little bit broody. It doesn't create a sense of trust. In fact, it creates distrust. Wherever I see you, I want to recognize that it's you. And a couple of ideas for an omni-channel approach. Now, some of these are simpler than others. Yes, yeah, some are more difficult. The first one, an obvious one, is somebody comes in store, wants to purchase something. It isn't available in their size or color, but you offer them that as a service within store, and then they can have it delivered to home. Yeah, so the other day, I was in Bravismo. I did just that. They didn't have my size available. It was ordered. It was free delivery. It arrived at home two days later. Fantastic. Click and collect. Yeah, so I can order it online, and I can collect in store. The advantage of obviously then bringing somebody in store is that they see the rest of the store, they see how beautiful everything else is. You get that opportunity to have a conversation. A click and collect should be a start of a conversation, not just a thanks and push them out the door. It should be a start of a conversation, particularly if you're a smaller independent store. Virtual outfit of the day, so the good old hashtag OOTD. So somebody can see it on Instagram, they can order on Instagram, and they can have it delivered to home. Classic example of an omnichannel approach. Uh, one of the businesses who does Outfit of the Day really well, um, and she's just a small business, a small independent business, is a business called Fairly Curved, F-A-I-R-L-I-E, Curved, who specializes in clothing for bigger busted women. A live virtual fashion show. So you don't have to have people in store anymore. You know, COVID, if one thing that COVID has taught us is nothing more than that. Live virtual fashion show with sneak peeks. So make your audience feel special. Give them a private invite. If they're on your email list, VIP invite to a virtual fashion show or an unboxing or a, a, a revealing of your next, um, your spring summer collection. Email sign up to show interest because you really want them on your list where you can really treat them as VIPs. Remember that from an email list perspective, you own that list. If they're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, they are not your audience, they are their audience. You're simply borrowing them at any time they can remove them from you, but your email list is your own. Using data. So understanding from your customers' purchases what they like, what they don't like, what they're most likely to buy from you, and then using that data to reveal to them their next great purchase. So using data to inform customers by email of similar or potentially desirable products that they can then view online, buy, and click and collect in store, where they can see the rest of the collection at the same time or something a little bit more tech-driven, an in-store app that will allow customers to scan products and to create a wish list, or the ability on your website to be able to create that wish list so that they can build up a wish list of products that they really want. When those products are available, come out in a different colorway, or you have something similar, send them an email, let them know about it. So that's it in terms of my slides for today. I'm more than ha happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm also going to be hanging around for five minutes at the end, so if you want to speak to me privately, please do. If you'd like a little, uh, start, start again. If you would like the slides, 
please feel free to give me your um, business card. I'll be more than happy to get those slides sent across to you. We've also got a special offer available, so if you use the QR code to um, scan through, we've got a 30-minute um, digital marketing consultancy session, and this is available for, no, for whatever it is that you want, whether that's for a social media review, quick website audit, a specific problem that you've got your, with, with your web page. We'll ask you for, some few, for, a, for a few bits of information so that we can make sure we match you with the right person, whether it's one of our trainers or whether it's one of our digital um, team, depending on what your needs are. And we've also got lots of different resources available. So as a business, we do lots of different things. So we do training, similar to today, but obviously in the course format. Um, we do digital services where we do it for you. We do consultancy where we can help you do it better. And we also have creative services as well. So if you're looking for a rebrand or a refresh or anything like that, we can help. And we have lots of freebies on the website as well, one of which is the Facebook group. So on Facebook, we've got a group for retailers. You'll see me pop up in there every now and then. I was there. Um, could have been last week or the week before, it's been a while, but a couple of weeks ago, talking about online media strategy and where to start with the strategy and how to build it. Um, I'm going to be doing something else in a couple of weeks, looking at measurement and the key metrics that you should be aware of. I was really surprised when I was at the Spring Fair to discover that nobody knew what their conversion rate was on their website. They're all invested in a website, but nobody knew how much they were actually converting. And we do lots of free webinars as well, depending, we do um, sector specific stuff. So if you do want to find out more, by all means, get in touch. Um, either info at or amy at amy at socialb.co.uk. I'll be more than happy to help. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand, and I can um, certainly help. If I can't help, I'll find out somebody who can and get back to you. But I hope you found it useful. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Somebody might be with a microphone, sorry, bear with me. Someone is... You what, sorry? Oh, the journey slide, yep, I can find it for you. Give me a second. <laughs> that one? That one? There you go. Does anybody have any questions? As I said, if anybody does want a copy of the slides, please feel free to give me a business card, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn and just drop me a message on there. I'll be more than happy to send them to you. You can find me as Amy Hobson UK, oh, as I fall off the stage, Amy Hobson UK on LinkedIn if you want to connect that way. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and the rest what's left of your weekend. <laughs>